time to break your fast. Do you want the choice of really good quality fast food and grill? Well, here's the place to come because in addition to that, you get the luxurious twist of fantastic desserts. Welcome to Freddo's. privileged at the moment because we're in Fridos and we're being shown how to make their very famous um, handmade fresh pizzas from scratch. So here to show us is Chef Babu um, and also we're joined by the proprietor of this establishment, Azad Hussain. Nice to meet you both. Nice to Wonderful. meet you as well. <laughs> Great pleasure. So, so first of all, we're starting off with the flour. Now, the flour is very, very important, yeah. isn't it? Yes. Um, the flour is actually the most important ingredient of a pizza because of every pizza, no matter what the topping is, you need flour. And good this, quality flour, yes. Yes, so this is organic flour. It's from a, a mills that go back from 1912. So we're very proud to use this flour. It's the best flour you can buy for pizza. Now they talk about you having signature dough here. Does this owe to it, the fact that you're using organic stone ground flour? Yes, yes, that's exactly what, what the label says. And Buffalo is going to be making up the, um, the dough. First of all, you're using the yeast. Now you yeah. use dry yeast, that's right. And if you just want to talk us through it, how much yeast you're using and how much water. Now I make the two liter, the two liter water, and I use the uh, eight gram dry yeast. Okay, so two liters of water and yeah. eight grams of dry, dry yeast. yeast. How many portions will that make? It will become to 20, 20 portions. 20 portions, yeah. that's amazing. Now also, while you're doing that, um, you can carry on. Um, it's really important also to make sure that um, the um, yeast needs to be hydrated in the water, of course, that's why we're adding it. But also the fact that the water needs to be lukewarm. If it's going to be too cold, then the gluten's going to leak out and it's just not going to be um, the quality dough that you want. So the water has to be around 22 degrees, then you get the best quality out of the yeast as well. Before the dough is actually made, how, how, long, how long do you have to keep doing this for? It's 15-20 uh, minutes. 15-20 minutes, minutes, and then it's done. 20 minutes, then just gone. Have you ever had to do it with your hand? No. no? You've always used a machine? machine always oh, great. Machine. I can't imagine doing that by hand. to rest and um, is a process of long fermentation and this allows the enzymes that are contained in the flour to transform the starch into the simple sugars and the gluten or the protein into the amino acids. It's all very scientific. I know this is a combined science class for you but look you know this is really important because this is what gives pizza its digestibility. So uh, Bubu, you yeah. now have got your 20 portions here of yeah. your dough. So how much each portion then? Each portion is uh, 220 grams. 220 grams. So you don't even have to measure that out, do you? You just <laughs> no, know how to do it. It's experience, you know. And of course, the base to every pizza is this lovely marinara that you've got here as well. Now, uh, marinara essentially is always made up of oregano, Oregon, garlic, olive, olive, and extra salt. virgin olive oil, salt, and the best quality tomatoes as well. Wonderful. Yes, this is um, a very, very um, traditional Italian wood fired oven. And the, uh, the, the main thing about it is the heat, it can go up to 450 to 500. Also, um, the briquettes that we use, the, the wood, it's 100% uh, compressed bark, and that will bring out the flavor, as you'll see with the pizza.
So you've got your base there, mm -hmm. and how thick is the base? That looks like it's even it's less it. than half a centimetre. Yeah, just so. Uh, really, really thin, and that's the secret of it, because once it goes into that wood fire oven, um, it's going to be really, really crispy at the bottom, isn't yes. it? So you want that as thin as possible. So then you're going to put your famous so marinara. That's right. And I notice actually that the marinara isn't too thick and it's not too thin, it's a really good consistency. been in there for about a minute and a half and it's already done and it just needs to be very gently taken out that's it that is your classic pizza oh man it doesn't get better than that look at that it's just look at that cheese just bubbling and dancing on the top it looks so tempting I could just dive into this right now This is the beef one that I requested, my special request, yes. Extra mushrooms. Again, look at the quality of that. And you can even, like, you can, just touching the side of it, the, the, the dough from the side has just become so beautifully crispy. And you can just see this, the lush contents of that pizza on top. It really does look incredibly appetizing. So I've been treating you guys to halal meat um, in various restaurants and, and establishments, but when I saw sea bass on the menu here, I flipped completely because we love sea bass at home. It's a real treat for us, and, um, and to have it on the menu, I thought, was a real treat as well. So I've asked Chef Afram here from Kosovo yep. to cook me his very special dish. Um, chef, do your thing. I can see that you've got Okay, Gorgeous we have a sea bass uh, fillet, which is coming filleted from the supplier, boneless, which is 100% boneless. And first thing, so I'm going to marinate it a little bit on a plate, which I'm going to put the seasons. So we're just pepper going with focus. ground pepper here, ground fresh pepper. ground pepper. Yeah, a little bit of uh, sea salt. Sea salt. Now, why do you use and sea salt instead of table salt? The reason is we're using sea salt because we're doing a grilled sea bass. And a grilled sea bass, sea salt, and a little bit of steak, and the sea salt can go drop down. Right. So get out from the from the grill. Right. So that's when I'm using Makes the sea sense. some garnish which is going with this dish and uh, on a garnish, our garnish we're using a fresh, fresh green beans uh, and uh, I toasted this one with a, on a hot pan, a little bit of olive oil and uh, green beans which is pre-blanched before yes. and uh, a little bit uh, cherry tomato. We put it in, we get to get hot and caramelized a little bit. In the meantime, I need to return another Another side of the sea bass, another side. Just turn it up to get marked. And I need to mark a half of lemon to serve with that. And that skin seems to have really caramelized as well. And I noticed that um, you've got a real crispiness going on yeah, there as well. Because when you use the skin, it's really like that. Yeah. And you turn it on the other side, the steam is come together between because the steam, the, the steam, it can go out yes. from the skin. The skin is pressing the steam down. The heat from the down is going up. So together, you make it a little bit more moisty and not dry. Wonderful. So whenever I make my fish with my green
green beans. I always serve it with new potatoes. Yeah. What are you serving it with? Are you serving we new serve potatoes? It with the rice. You serve it with the rice. Yes, and is that a spicy rice? rice? It's a spicy rice, yes. Okay. It's a spicy rice. Okay, that's something different then, okay, isn't yeah. it? Okay, well, I'm looking forward to that. This is your final front. I think you should be holding this, not me. Okay. You should be I taking the credit for no what problem. you've done. <laughs> I am so impressed with that dish. It's simplicity on a plate, isn't it? it is. It's just simple, but it's it's just the best meal ever. This is the sort of food that we love having practically every day at home. It's wholesome, it's good for you, it's got everything that you need. Yes. So anyone that knows me knows how much I love my steak, but when I saw Angus on this menu in a halal restaurant, I have to say I was slightly surprised. Angus being a premier steak, so it's quite difficult to get hold of. A lot of the other steak houses that we've been to where we've experienced their, um, their meat has been from various other places, but to actually get Angus is quite unusual in terms of halal. So. Um, uh, Asad, um, as, as you know, um, I, I was just saying that Angus is something that's quite unusual to get in a halal restaurant. Where do you source your Angus from then particularly? Well, our beef comes from uh, Hill Farm Finest, who's a very reputable company that have their own farms. And this is uh, aged, 21 days aged Angus from Scotland. Right. And it is the, the finest quality you can buy in halal especially in halal uh, steaks. Right, okay. Why is it so difficult to get halal Angus, particularly? Or is it not that it's difficult to get, it's just more expensive? Well, I, I think it's, it's the way the cattle is bred, it's the way uh, uh, the cattle is bought up. And because the mass market from the, the meat shops, everything that you see locally, is for the mass, it's not dedicated, it's not for a particular area. And people actually don't even know. So you could say this is the the premium of the premium as far as beef is concerned. But as far as your menu is concerned, it's reflected in the price as well. So when you see the Angus steak, it is reflected in the price in terms of it being slightly more ex expensive. Rightly so, rightly yeah, so. I think, I think on price-wise, we are not, we've kept our margins very low. But what we would like to do is to offer the best quality meat to all our customers. Right. But what I have noticed as well is that we've got wet aged as opposed to dry aged meat here so basically when it's wet aged it um, it comes from the manufacturer like this in a vacuum sealed um, bag and um, the advantage of it being wet aged is that of course it's um, it, it doesn't take as long as dry aged um, but it's not as intense in flavor as dry age would be, although you still do get a very, very good flavor from it. And of course, what you see over here is not, is not blood, it's the myoglobin, so um, don't be put off by that at all. Even when you have it on the plate and it's medium rare and you see the juices come from that. But that looks like a really, really good cut, so I'm quite looking forward to it. Um, Sam, Sammy, Sam, <laughs> you are going to be our chef for this lovely steak. And I can see here, Sam, that you've got some that are ready marinated. So this is your ribeye. And you can tell it's ribeye, can't you, because of that marbling that's there as well. And it's a cut that's close to the loin, that's so it's so going to be yeah. really tender. Yeah. Now, you yeah. marinate this then yes. in what appears to be some rosemary, some thyme, and some garlic. Yeah, and extra virgin olive oil. And extra virgin olive oil. oil. Yeah. And it's really important, actually, when you use these dry herbs, especially these very woody herbs like rosemary, that you must douse them in, in olive oil because it really owes to the flavour and it infuses. Flavor, yeah. Absolutely. So that's been marinating for how long, would you say? Uh, uh, 24 hours. 24 hours. That's going to be delicious. OK, Sam, I'm going to let you do your thing. Most of the sauce we've got is mushroom sauce, very nice uh, sauce for this year. 
Yeah. And uh, peppercorn sauce as well. We make our stock here. We make our beef stock here. We get the bones. Yeah. And we make our uh, beef stock here. And we make the sauce, which are very nice. Yeah. Fredo's in London and I'm joined by the proprietor um, Azad Hussain. Um, it's been a real pleasure and the best part of the show is yet to come because I have the opportunity to taste this lovely food that I've seen being prepared today. Now, so how popular is the sea bass dish? Sea bass is, uh, for those who know fish very well, it's obviously the king of the sea. It's very, very popular for us. Uh, it's a very unique dish. Mm. It's very fresh from uh, salty waters. And uh, definitely, definitely, like I said, those who know about fish, once they've had our sea bass, they will come back for more. I have to say, this is a dish that you have to come here and taste. What, what's really nice about this is, as you said, the freshness and the tenderness, the crispy skin. It's got everything on here that I absolutely love. And obviously it's grilled, so it's very, very healthy uh, at the same time. Do you know, especially during fasting month, this is the one that we have to eat really, isn't it? This is the sort of food that we have to try and um, indulge ourselves with because it really is so good for you. It's got everything in here that we need. That's your mighty, mighty with beef. the mushrooms. With the mushrooms. With the mushrooms as well. And that's the famous oh, pepperoni. The pepperoni as well. Everybody right. knows very well. I know. Mm. That is really good. It's really oozing with cheesiness. It's not too greasy. The quality of the pepperoni is really good. And um, as to the saltiness um, of the pizza as well, the dough is crispy on the, on the bottom, as you would expect in um, a, a wood um, fire oven, and really lovely and crispy on the sides as well, and really soft in the middle. <laughs> It's a really good pizza, actually, I have to say. So we're going to try the other one now. This is the um, the Mighty Beef. I, <laughs> I'm going to take off a couple of those jalapenos um, because it, it might be just a little bit too hot for me. Mm. The beef is absolutely spiced to perfection. It doesn't... It doesn't um, impose on this dish too much. It, it really is very, very mild. To go with the cheese, to go with the vegetables on there as well. I love it. It's a really good pizza. Well, this is the same Angus uh, beef with the uh, Fredo spices on there. Mm. And the freshness of the ingredients of a pizza is actually the success. Mm. So pizza, they all look the same, but the ingredients makes, it, makes all the difference. So you've made a lot of provisions for um, customers who are coming here to break their fast as well, haven't you, for the month of Ramadan? Yes, yes. And definitely. I noticed that you provide huge um, plates of fruit and dates for them. Um, and there's been a whole crowd actually that's come here uh, just before the time for breaking fast and they've all placed their orders in anticipation and you have the fruit ready for them which is wonderful and you also do this Ramadan soup as well yes so can you tell me Herrera soup so it's, as you know Sami our chef is from uh, Morocco this is his homemade soup from Morocco so it's a, one of, uh, it's a very very nice it's Moroccan lovely soup. it's warm I was just saying, it's just so tasty. It's really beefy. This it's got the chickpeas in and some noodles. It looks like a very authentic... This, this is the second year we, we use this soup. Throughout Ramadan, we, we change the soup, but this is a very popular soup for us. And obviously the, the fruits, 
Well, alhamdulillah, we're very blessed in Ramadan. We are very, very busy, especially at weekends. It's very hard to get a table unless it's pre booked. So it's always advisable for people to book before uh, coming. Mm -hmm. Good advice. Right, now over here, this is a peri-peri chicken. Um, as you know about peri-peri, Portuguese dish, um, it, uh, it originates uh, from the Portuguese colonies of Africa and they brought the tastes over um, and this is what we've ended up with which has become such a staple in this country. It has taken this country by storm, hasn't it? It has. Perry seems to be extremely popular. So let me give you some chicken as well. Do you want me to cut some for you? Now I've seen that Sammy has gone to the liberty of um, giving me the hot Perry sauce. <laughs> I don't know what he was thinking but um, I'm pleased to try it anyway. So which would you say of all the peri dishes that you've got here, the different, um, with the different sauces is the most popular one? I think the most popular is the medium, even though the hot is um, it's very nice. It's not as hot as you expected. It's full of flavour, <laughs> yeah. and the peri-peri sauce that we have is our own homemade peri-peri sauce with our own Fredo's ingredients. It's not the typical peri-peri sauce you'd find everywhere. Mm. It's got uh, a twist from Fredo's. So, uh, and people have said that it's actually the best peri-peri chicken we've ever had. It's really tasty, and even though I have been given the hot one, it's, it's got a real kick to it. It's got the chilli kick to it, of course. But the taste that comes through from, um, from that marinade, that's a really special um, marinade that you've got here, is really, really tasty. So in all honesty, if you're in the area during Iftar, then definitely pay this place a visit. I thought it would be a jack of all trades and a master of none, but how wrong was I? The food here is of a very good quality, and with the variety that you get, you will be left practically comatose at the end of your meal. So definitely pay this place a visit. That's all from me on Iftar Run. Join me next time, only on Islam Channel.